All right, let's celebrate. Uh, oh, look at this band. Another crazy band. Oh, I've got to give them credit. This is the Stanford University marching band. They These are guys so good. are a little nutty. You can tell their their hats don't quite match. <laughs> yeah, that's my kind of band. Let's listen and watch. If they'll, if you want to see a band stay in step, forget it. Tucker now. At halftime, they'll have to carry them out on cots. The football players or the band? No, the, the band. Oh, no. No, wait, is that a keg? That's supposed to be the drum. <laughs> That's a local fraternity to have a new keg. So. <laughs> oh, kids that these is a days. lot of weight to be carrying. Kids the these days. Oh, look at him go. You got to, oh, you just got to love it. I've been rolling mine in Stanford. <laughs> <laughs> so you can go to dad's weekend. <laughs> That's great. All right, and following on the heels of the university, uh, Stanford University Marching Band, let's celebrate nature. Six brightly colored macaws are going to frolic playfully in a lush tropical forest of roses and vegetation native to the Amazon, Paul. Oh, it is lush. I mean, every aspect of it. You've got one million flowers on this float. One million. Wow. It's an incredible display. Features some of my favorite tropical plants, especially anthuriums. But what's really cool, see, well, there's some red and green anthuriums uh -huh. that are used yeah. there. And see how they're shingled to create yeah. that the way the feathers would appear. Now, are or the, the green ones just not uh, just fully a, developed yet? Just a different, a or different, just a different variety. And uh, so much rich detail on here. I love tropical plants. One of my favorite plant groups. Unfortunately, in my neck of the woods, I have to grow them in, in the house of house plants. But still, beautiful float. And his family. They're led by Marshal Benny Martinez Jr. Beautiful horse. Look at that. Hey, that's a perfect circle. I can do that. Very, very, very good. You know, for more in-depth information about the parade today, why don't you log on to the HGTV website at hgtv.com. You're going to find detailed descriptions of each entry, the floats, the bands, and the equestrians. Maybe you got a relative that's in the parade. You can sure look them up here on HGTV's website. You'll also be able to participate in an interactive quiz about the parade. So again, that's the hgtv.com. That's all you got to do. HGTV is also bringing you the... Uh, first interactive television event of the year 2000. If you're watching on web TV, simply click the I and join in and even more in-depth quizzes about the Tournament of Roses parade. And man, he's going to have a tired arm. Look at that beautiful, beautiful Charo suit that he's wearing. Great job. Wonderful job. All right, coming across the starting line here on Orange Grove, imagine the future. And this float provides a fantastic view of futuristic games. And Rebecca, you were reminding us at the beginning, that's the whole theme of this parade. Yes, this one was fun. You know, when we saw this, it was clad in scaffolding. And so we couldn't see the head of this dragon wow. very well. But look now, that. look, the, the, the green dots you see there, Brussels sprouts. And not only are the Brussels sprouts picked off the stem, they have to be picked off. And then with a razor blade, the volunteers have to cut the bottom to make a flat surface. And then have you ever tried gluing Brussels sprouts? in the white glue. I can't even eat them. Uh, every weekend I do that. It, it takes a long time for them to stick. They've they also are. used banana leaves uh -huh. um, that you can see that's the smooth texture we see there. Um, we also are seeing a lot of the, the straw flour that has been crushed. We're seeing the, the wheat, the sweet uh, rice. White, white rice. Yes. Uh -huh. The um, All the green there, once again, this is called tea leaves. And here again, in order to get that look that we're seeing, that shingled scaled look volunteers with razor blades are using a palette to cut those leaves so that they're precisely the shape of the scale that they're going to put onto this dragon think, think of the hours and hours oh. of volunteer labor that is required and, and you got to think can, would you be patient enough to do this i look at that and go man i'm glad they're doing it i tell you i saw six women sitting at a table opening up carnations that for one reason or another had refused to open and couldn't then be used. So they were 
literally opening these with their fingers, taking hours upon hours. Carnation to do it. by carnation. Yeah. There's a little space as we come upon the Grove City High School Marching Band. They're from Grove City, Ohio. And there's 304 total members that have made it. They raised money, which they needed more than $14,000, by the way, by doing a walk-a-thon. This is how they got to Pasadena. Let's listen to the gang from Grove City High School in Ohio. Mom and Dad, you should be proud. The kids are looking great. Their lines are straight, and they're in step. And the uniforms are pressed precisely. If you didn't make the trip, they're having a great time. But they miss you. <laughs> and they want to come home soon. <laughs> yeah, right. And they want you to send them more money for college. This band has won more than 35 Grand Champion Awards in the field and parade marching competitions they're in the last 10 good. years. Very, very, very good. Very, very good. And once again, we're in red and white. Everybody's wearing red and white this year. Hot colors. Hey, let's take a look at a trophy winner. This one, the Princess's Trophy. This is for the most beautiful entry under 35 feet in length. So you don't have to be big to be a, a winner here, Paul. No, this is treasures for always. And as a matter of fact, this is the smallest float in the parade at only 5,000 pounds. It may be small in size, but it's certainly big on details. I had a close-up view of this one, and it just knocked me out. The frame that you see there, onion seeds, poppy seeds, and lettuce seeds were used to make the frame and the picture itself. The detail of these ropes here, these were made with chicken wire, sprayed with polyurethane, and then covered with alfalfa seeds. But the twisting and turning in those ropes, it looks real. It does. Unbelievable. I really love this. And, and this is powered by, count of one, two, three, four, smaller miniature horses. Aren't they cute? They're having a good time. That's the full power right there. You, some of these floats have big diesel engines, and not these guys. They just need a little hay, and they're off and running. Nicely done. Look at the detail on the brooch there in the center of the little... How do you pronounce that? The Limoges style Le jewelry box? Limoges. This is a Limoges egg. Oh, thank you. We may have some collectors out there who collect a few Limoges eggs. I wish I was one. And here is the Honorable Bill Bogart, the mayor of... This is some of the stuff you've been talking about. What yeah, is Yeah, this is chartreuse moss, and there's any number of different genuses of moss. This is one, though, with a really vibrant color. Yeah. And this is used in a number of different ways to achieve this wonderful green this lime green, and then here's a lotus seed pod. Wonderful. Gives you gotta nice glue that texture. on. And they use two or three different types of glues too, don't they? Yeah, they have a white glue, they have a sticky glue, mm -hmm. and they have a, um, what's the other glue? Another it's glue. It's a, a florist glue of some kind. <laughs> That's the Oasis. That's the Oasis glue. Thank I'll you I'll figure much. out the other one. All right, rising to the occasion with this beautiful float, and there's a nice wave from a very lovely young lady. Aerosol glue. Aerosol glue. Thank you, Rebecca. I knew you'd think of that. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about rising to the occasion. Well, the hardest part about this one is the color. The color blue. There's not a lot of flowers that we can extract blue from. There we go. We can see some of the blue. What they have done here is they have taken status. Now, if you've grown status, you know the buds on the end of the stem are very small. Mm -hmm. People had to pick those stems out, pick the, the flowers out. It, one stem will give you less than an eighth of a cup of status. Oh so God. you can imagine how long they were picking the buds off of status to create, and we've got a lot of blue there. Again, a lot of the flags, we've got lentil seeds and different colors of greens and oranges, onion seeds, which gives us the black. Uh, we have the sweet rice, the beans, uh, sesame seeds, bronze straw flowers once again. And of course, if you look at the base, that is completely filled with a variety of beautiful orchids, roses. And speaking of roses, 
here's the Camarillo White Horses featuring riders in extravagant Spanish costumes and horses in silver tack. Look at that. Look at those beautiful outfits. Camarillo White Horses have uh, been bred for more than 75 years. Look at that one. He's looking right at the camera saying, Wow. Here. Put, put, do a close-up of me. Put me on TV. <laughs> That's nice. Oh, no, humility in nice. his family. He's got it all. Here's the United States Marine Corps West Coast Composite Band, and the folks are on their feet here oh, in great. Pasadena. Beautiful Troops. uniforms. Troops, Tin Hut. Yep. 110 members. part float, and this is a, what they call a, uh, a self-designed, self-made float. It's also the winner of the Founders Trophy for the most beautiful entry built and decorated by volunteers from the sponsoring organization, and this comes from the La Cunada Flint Ridge uh, area adjacent to Pasadena, and Rebecca, you had a lot of fun checking this one You out. know, there were so many different elements here that made this fun. First of all, the grass you see is wheat grass. Rather than using sod, wheat grass shows up better from a distance. You can oh, look at that there. Yeah, come on, hit the Are ball. They, and this was hydroponically grown, which means no soil, so it's lighter. And of course, they've had to mist this daily to keep it hydrated. Then the ball, by the way, is covered with mums. I'm sure it's not USGA approved, but, <laughs> but we tried to count the dimples, and it certainly didn't, uh, didn't stand up to that. A couple of other things. The lotus flowers are made with a lot of beans. They use mung beans for this. And look at the ducks there. Now, this was interesting. They used gladiola petals. They ran out of petals by to do all the ducks. So they had to, they, in, and this is what happens a lot of times when you're decorating a float. They had to find another material to cover the baby. And ducks. that was designed, by the way, by a fellow who'd never designed a float in his life. Didn't he do a great yeah, job? Wow. Did a wonderful, wonderful job. This is the Ramona Pageant Spanish Rider and Carriage Parade Team. And HDTV's commercial free coverage of the 111th Tournament of Roses Parade is sponsored by Kodak's. Kodak Advantix Cameras and Film. There it is. And just a reminder, you're watching HGTV's commercial free coverage of the 111th Tournament of Roses Parade, and it's a beaut. I'm Rob Weller, along with Rebecca Coles and Paul James. We're really enjoying our day here today as we see another fabulous float coming down, celebrating tomorrow you know, together. This was truly one of my favorite, favorite floats here. And it won the Governor's yeah. Trophy. Uh huh. This I is for best depiction of life in California. Yeah. If you look closely, first of all, just to design every kid's uniform, every uh, uh, the clothes there. We have a lot of mums, the straw flowers. Look at this cute little dog with the bandana around him. Again, for the dog, they used a lot of the crushed rice. Now, look at the jeans on the guy. Now, remember what I told you about blue flowers? Uh -huh. Well, of course, they had to use status here, so somebody was doing a lot of plucking on the flower heads to get the status. Every picnic needs ants. I don't know if you can see them tucked away they're somewhere along the table but uh, they were coating them with Japanese seaweed they have baskets of vegetables which I am telling you look good enough to eat the carrots had orange lentil and saffron and had tree ferns for the carrot tops so Rob, this is truly Rob one of my favorites and you know Rebecca folks may wonder how do they judge these floats what criteria do they use and how can they possibly make up their mind and we're fortunate enough to have up here in our home and garden television broadcast booth or cable casting booth one of the three judges today uh, and let's welcome George is it Hasenberg or Hasenberg well I don't know how to say in Holland we say Hasenberg Hasenberg you're from Holland I'm from Holland and it's a joy and a pleasure to be here well we appreciate happy new year yeah, happy new year to you and everyone uh, and happy new year to everyone back home thank you how do you figure which is the best one well it's very difficult we are three judges that makes it already easier uh-huh but it's very difficult to make because you would like to give everyone the highest price right. or the best price. Uh -huh. But at the end, you have to be at a normal mind and uh, you use your knowledge which you have had already in your work to try to make the best choice. And in this case, it was this choice. Yeah. Hang on just a sec. We've got a band coming by and I want yes. to uh, remind nice everyone that this is the... Uh, the Lincoln Way Community High School, Rob. Yeah, thank you very, very much there, Paul. I got my back turned to my script, and I don't even know where I am here. This is the Lincoln Way Community High School Band from New Lenox, Illinois, 256 members. Let's listen to them for a moment or two.
wonderful band there from New Lenox, Illinois, 256 members. Coming up in just a second, we've got a, another trophy winner, and we're talking to George Hasenberg, who is from uh, from Holland, and he's one of the three judges that is here this year. And we're talking about uh, the criteria that's that's used, and when do you start the judging process, George? Well, we start already thinking about it when you are invited, and that's already two years ago that the president asked me to come here. But the real judging begins three days before the float starts in the parade. Mm -hmm. And then and you look at it once. No, we and make your make your mind we, up or twice. We're going uh, three times. Uh, last uh, time we have been is this night. We started at two o'clock this morning, and we finished at five o'clock. Here is the president's trophy winner for most effective use and presentation of flowers. It's called Rainforest Rendezvous. Now. What kinds of things were you looking at as you watch this, as you judge this float? Well, we are three judges, and each has his own speciality. I'm in the flower growing business, and uh, I'm looking mostly in the flowers. My two other judges, one, they are in a different region. Uh, one was an artist, and the second one had been at an artistic school, too. So they look it in a different view. So I took especially the flower part of it, and I think in this part, uh, well, this float had so many nice things. It looks like a rainforest, and of all the floats you see then, and which can go for that trophy, uh, we chose this one. Uh, because it there's Jack Hanna, by the way, right, Paul? Isn't that a buddy of yours? That's Jack Hanna with Louis the orangutan, and I tell you, this float, Knock me out. But there's you see six... all those nice oriental flowers like anthurium, dendrobium, well, you name it. Heliconius. It really was a lush flows. Of course, I regret I couldn't give the prize to another float because there are many flows. Uh -huh. But at a certain moment, you have losers and winners. And, and, and you said this has got the best overall look? and, and uh, We it... thought for this prize, yes. George, thank you very, very much. You know, we've never, I've never had an opportunity to talk to a, a Rose Parade judge before. This has been pretty special, and we appreciate your insight, and Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to all. Thank, thank you. Thank you for coming from Holland. And I hope everybody who, who looks here will enjoy it. We, we certainly are. George Hasenberg, who's been one of thank the you. three judges that has uh, been doing the judging for uh, each float, he said, they look at three times. Hey, there's some camels. <laughs> we got camels on parade. We do have camels. Actually, you know, in 1913, the old Tournament of Roses parade made history with its first and only elephant slash camel race. <laughs> and did they have the race because the football game just soured? And they didn't think a lot of people would show up yeah, to the next one. 13 or 14 years, they didn't have a football game. So they game. brought in the camels. Yeah. And they had races. That's hilarious. In the first game, Michigan beat Stanford so bad, no one else wanted to play Michigan anymore. <laughs> so they had camel <laughs> races. Oh, now look at this. Thing. This is called Passing the Torch. It's the order of AHEPA. They salute the Olympics. And Paul, this is a beaut. Well, a beaut it is. And an award winner, the Queen's Trophy for the best use of roses. Look at the display wow. on this thing. I tell you, just look at how the rich detail and the colors and the urn there. I really love that urn up close. A variety of seeds, onion and sesame seeds, as well as Japanese seaweed, some nori on there. So, no, if that doesn't look like a Grecian urn, I, I just, I can't believe, look at it that. doesn't look real. Look at the detail in that. It's outstanding, outstanding. And again, best use of roses. So even though you don't see it covered, literally covered with roses, it's yeah. the manner in which they've chosen to use them that really captivated the judge's eyes here. And what's the rule of thumb on number of roses that you have to use again? Just Must. one. Just one. Just one, that's just it. Just one. They used to back in the years back. You had to have so many, but now it's just one row somewhere on the top. Uh -huh. the, yeah. te the Temple of Zeus there. More crushed sweet rice, sesame seeds, Ming moss, and a material raw cotton seed. Well, they did a fabulous job. And to salute the fabulous job, well, here's the Pflugerville High School Band from Pflugerville, Texas. 345 members. And they are here in California, ready to blow those flugelhorns.
they might as well play about a yellow rose, huh? Peterville, Texas, and this is the past president's trophy for most innovative use of both floral and non-floral materials. It's called Ahead of Our Time 2000 BC. This one, again, was one of my favorites. Now, first, I have to tell you, you saw Wilma's red hair, and you can see Pebble's red hair. Uh -huh. They were out looking for red. How can we get red? But red that looks like red hair. There you go. You can see it. This, believe it or not, is crushed red pepper. Now, the people who had to apply this had to don plastic gloves and a mask. And because as you put it on, of course, all the pepper would fly This up. is the same thing you put on the top of your pizza? Uh, that's exactly the same thing. Now, as we take a look back at Bam Bam, you're going to see him coming up. His hair is pampas grass, but there was a problem. Pampas grass, there it is, was nice and billowy. It kept flying away. You know how fly away hair is. Yeah, right. Bad hair day. So yeah. they had to literally spray his hair with hairspray to hold it in place and to give Bam Bam that little kid look with his they, hair. They sprayed this pampas grass with hairspray? Yeah, they had to. Moose would not do. It would not do. His hair was all over the place. Look at Fred. Great expression. Good, well, good a wonderful flow. This job. is really nice. Again, a, a lot of the... Um, the volunteers yeah. were having more fun on that float. Yeah, they right. were. They were. And this is Catching the Future. Catching the Future. Here we have uh, making, turning roses into ketchup. These are the Heinz horses, by the way. The Heinz, Heinz hitch. Eight, eight of them. We have 57 real tomatoes on this, and you can see oh, roses coming down the <laughs> conveyor belt. Of course, they're not the real roses. They were had to be covered with plant material to look like roses. And uh, the horses, of course, pulling this float again. As we take a look at this one, um, you can see, of course, this reminds me of the fast food is alive and well in the future. Mm -hmm. Everything that we eat now is there. Fries, burgers, and hot dogs. The fries were covered with sesame, and it's covered with sesame street, the seed. You'd stand back from it, they look good enough to eat. Now, there was a problem with the hot dog bun and the hamburger bun. The hot dog right bun, there, you can uh -huh. see it's rather brown. Well, they put on a plant material, straw flour, but it got sunburned as it sat out in the sun. And this is, again, some of the problems that these people face. Well, they didn't know whether to take it off and start over, but then they said, no, it looks like a wheat bun. So that was truly made to be a wheat bun. <laughs> yeah, right. I have my hot dogs on yeah. whole wheat buns there all the time. Looks like a wiener to me. <laughs> hey. You can see the tomatoes going up the conveyor belt, coming out as roses. This is a lot of fun. A lot of uh, a lot of plant material used here. Uh, 25,000 carnations. Wow. That was hauled by eight Percheron horses. Big ones. They were yeah. lovely, lovely, lovely steeds. This is the Butler Golden Tornado Marching Band. They're from Butler, Pennsylvania. 362 of them made the trip to Pasadena, California. They've been out here a few days practicing and playing. So let's listen. Golden Tornado Marching Band, and we saw them featured, of course, on Here Comes the Band a couple hours ago, hours ago before we started our coverage here. 
live on HGTV from Pasadena, California. Mm -hmm. I could use a good malt right now. Here's a yes. cosmic malt shop. Yeah, now, now I just want to know, is this what our teenagers are going to look like in the future, or is this the malt shops they may visit? Some of, us may think that, <laughs> some of us may think our teenagers look like this now, well, but, I, yeah, that's but right. no, these yeah. are alien teenagers. They are an alien skin tone. It's covered with split pea, dalmung beans with yellow straw flower petals, dressed with carnations, banda orchid petals, and sinuata status dendrobium. Uh, one thing, one thing about this one, of course, we have a lot of metallic look here, so they had to use silver leaf, which we showed you earlier. Uh -huh. They had to strip eucalyptus leaves off the stems and apply them on as well. You can take a look at that uh, globe as it's spinning around again. That's lentil, lentils literally glued on top there. You know, the animation that we're seeing now is pretty commonplace in most of the floats. Actually, didn't start till after World War II, but in the 50s, when this parade started to get on television, that's when they started uh, really hopping up these things and, and making the animation uh, important. Yeah. And you can see, like the, the aliens and the dog alien, and the, those are not aliens. Those are real teenagers. Those. Okay. <laughs> That's what they'll be dressed in. Actually, that's not bad. <laughs> and here he is, the Tournament of Roses president, Ken Burroughs. There he is, taking a wave. He's riding a 1931 Duesenberg Model J. And it's a beautiful, beautiful car. Uh, Ken was the one who, who said this year, I want big bands. So let's get bands that have lots and lots of members. And I think the music has been terrific this year. It's yes. been louder than uh, Absolutely. I recall in the past. Yes. You, 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 the secession line's about nine years, but usually 30 years of, uh, of uh, participation. some sort of participation, Absolutely. volunteering in the parade is, is uh, preferred. Very devoted. By the way, this car, look at this beauty, a 1912 Packard Yosemite Touring Bus. You know, <laughs> that's, that's bigger than I remember. <laughs> uh, that's a Yosemite Touring Bus. Of course, Yosemite National Park about four or five hour drive from the city of Los Angeles. And worth every hour. They, in an interactive quiz about the parade. So again, check in to HGTV.com. I know a lot of you have your computers and your TVs in the same room, so let's go over there and get online right now. And this is the Pearl City High School Charger Marching Band there from Oahu, Hawaii. And we should mention, look at the skirts. They are the real, the real grass skirts made with banana leaves and tea leaves direct from Hawaii. So another use for those things. Uh, I was going to say 350 total members of the Pearl City High School Charger Marching Band. This is probably the only group that's come here and found cooler weather. <laughs> Everybody else is probably putting suntan lotion that's on. Right. These guys are saying, no way, man. Give me a parka. It's about, uh, about 60 degrees here in Pasadena, California. A little cooler than normal. Yeah, it's normal. damp. spectators here on the parade route. In fact, that was probably just a thumbnail full here at the starting line at Orange Grove going on down to Colorado Boulevard. The, the bulk of the parade really is on Colo Colorado. And that's where you see the folks, uh, the, the majority of the people who camp out, they bring the little pots to, to cook stuff. They bring their sleeping bags. They bring the family cow. It's, <laughs> it's all amazing. here. It's all here. And the city does such a good job preparing for the campers. After all, hands and the equestrian units. Nowhere else in the world is there a parade like this. And nowhere else is Home and Garden, uh, is, is, are you seeing commercial free coverage of this parade like the coverage that Home and Garden is giving you? This is a time machine. Hey, wouldn't you love to go back tomorrow, Paul? I'm ready. You know, this is another winner, the animation trophy. Best display of animation. And I'm telling you, they really made it come together here. This thing, kaleidoscope of colors and patterns. The walls of the time machine that you're seeing right now, the white and yellow chrysanthemums, they're flanked with accents in red, hot pink, and magenta carnations. The gadgets and doodads which surround this thing are made up with orchids, orange Gerbera daisies, blue status. Look at all the different materials on this float. The brass and chrome features, the brass was made with gold, yellow, and bronze straw flowers. The chrome 
silver leaf, protea, and eucalyptus petals. Look at this thing going on. And you can That's hear the uh, you can hear the noise coming oh, out look, of this. Somebody coming out of the top. Uh -oh. There we go. Finally, the sun is breaking through for the first time, and it's going to help accentuate a lot of the Look colors that, that Rebecca and Paul have been telling you about. Look at all the gizmos, the diphthongs, and the whatchamacallits <laughs> floating around on that. Once again, this is the uh, winner of the animation trophy. Very so cool. this thing moves more than any other uh, float, according to the judges. Once again, the judges look at a variety of of areas, flowers, animation, theme. Well, you know, the guy that did the engineering, he's not a degreed engineer. He's just a guy that loves to tinker. Really? And put this whole thing together. Now, we weren't able to see the whole trick here, but oh. there we go. Oh, I they see. come down in front. They start at one end and reappear. Now, Is you may it? not have been able to <laughs> see it exactly, but what happened was there was a set of twins, two different ones oh, at one end, great. and their counterparts appeared at the other end. Oh, so this is trickery. Absolutely. This is skullduggery. Absolutely. Well, the magic give of them, television. I'd give them that award myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. There they go. There's right the, the big turn. Now you can see down Colorado Boulevard. You can see Look what I'm talking about. A lot of people. A lot of people lined up, and man, they get here early. This is the Welsh Dragons. They're making their third appearance in the Rose Parade. This equestrian troupe wears Renaissance attire. They're hailing from all parts of the Southern California area. And their, uh, their country of origin for their hardworking ponies, Wales. My heavens, the Welsh ponies range in size from, oh, maybe 44, 45 inches up to 58 inches. They got a, uh, their, their cob's a little thicker, they're short-legged legged horses, and they can get up to about 64 inches. So how many hands would that be, Rob? That's uh, two you, cubits, three and a half cubits, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> I was testing his equestrian knowledge there. You are so mean to me, Paul. Hey, this is the fantasy trophy winner. It's called Virtual Reality. And well, yeah, <laughs> and I'm telling you, I'm really partial to this float. What happened here? We got an astronaut. We've got a, uh, a knight in shining armor, and we've got a great big old Tyrannosaurus Rex. And check out the detail on T-Rex here. I'm telling you, the detail's incredible, and it includes a bunch of edibles. You're seeing limes, you're seeing almonds, split pea, mung beans, kumquats, oranges, sun-dried tomatoes, even acorn squash. Oh, Look at the yeah. acorn squash wow. along the top there. Put a little butter in that and yeah, cook that for about you five got it. You got it. sugar. <laughs> now, Paul, tell me what you think, but I think this year I have seen more actual plants like like the melons and the limes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And more fresh and live material I as love well. That. As opposed to just dried material. Yeah. And this, a winner, fantasy trophy. I, I have to recall our our, broad, our our cable cast last year for HGTV where we seem to be talking more about the same flowers last year. This year there's a seems to be a far greater variety. You're right, you're right. Richer yes. diversity and a lot more variety and I think more imaginative use of materials yeah. as well. And, and the people who are building the floats, they, they too are trying to be more creative. They said, we don't want to use what everybody else is using, so they literally will go shop at the produce department and try to find colors that nobody else might have. I know I'm going to do the same thing. I go to the, the next time I go to the store. I'm going to be not only looking to see the produce and what yeah, I want for dinner, but how would that work on a float? Right, and how, and how much silver leaf can I glue on that? <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to do it. Hey, let's say hi to the uh, Los Angeles Unified All District Honor Band. There's 325 members. This is the outstanding, this outstanding band represents students from 49 high school districts throughout the Los Angeles area. Thank you. 
the... Uh... A, a float one time uh, ran right into that thing. Oh. Yeah, I know. All well, right, this it's one's hard fine. To see. This is a green, it's called LA. a green L.A., Rebecca. What do they mean by that? Well, what, what L.A. is hoping is that uh, as they move into the millennium, they want to start cleaning the environment. They want to think green. They want to do, they hope to see L.A. to uh, really start recycling, using solar energies, getting rid of pesticides and herbicides. So this float depicts what it might look like if they continue to follow through. Now, if you look at the back, you know, we talked about how we use all this plant material. Birds of Paradise is used all the time. Well, when you have Birds of Paradise that is 10 feet tall, you can't <laughs> use the real thing, yeah. so you have to recreate it. And they've and done a striking it, job of doing that. Isn't that amazing? I mean, from a distance, it's we've got one sitting right here in the booth. It's the same a mirrored image. Uh, one thing here, they, they used a lot of eucalyptus, of course, for the green. 135,000 eucalyptus leaves, and I counted. I, sir, I really did. You know, we lost track of you for a while. Now I know where you were. <laughs> we, we guessed the bundles they had and there were how many leaves on each little stem, counted them down, figured out the boxes and cases. We came out with 135,000 single eucalyptus leaves that have been glued hand by hand, piece by piece, onto this. And also, they have 200 gallons of water running and I'm looking closely. Can you see the water? Yeah, they've got it. This is a real right there. You can see it right in the center of your screen. In that purple, they've got 200 gallons going through. It's a real river. Well, it's a little fountain. Yes. I don't know if you call it a river. By the way, I can, if I could mention the bird of paradise, also known as Strelitzia, one of my favorite flowers, and it makes a dynamite houseplant. It's the official flower of the city of Los Angeles. You can actually get them to bloom. When does it bloom in, in most of the country, if it's indoors? In your neck of the woods, uh, <laughs> hope for late August. <laughs> <laughs> right. Anything that blooms, you know, in Wisconsin this time. The, 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 uh, the, the things that are turning there, those are windmills. If you've been maybe in the Palm Springs area, uh, there's a couple of passes, mountain passes, where the wind is so mighty that they put those windmills up and generates uh, a lot of electricity in around the local areas. Hey, this is the... Possibilities, Peruvian Paso Horse Club. Actually, it's probably Paso. I'm probably mispronouncing it. This, uh, this New Year's Day marks the Possibilities' seventh year of participation in the Rose Parade. Those are Peruvian Pasos. The smoothest riding the, uh, horse in the world, they say. Is that right? Yep. Well, look at them galloping. They're not even moving. I mean, hey, well, that's well, a dragon. Rebecca. Check this out, gang. This is visions, <laughs> that is moving. visions this is, of wisdom and imagination. The judge will special trophy here for outstanding oh. showmanship and dramatic impact. And who could argue with the judges on their decision? Uh, yeah. This one, was the detail is so exquisite on this float. Oh. So many things going on. You've got the mix of animatronics, tremendous use of plants, and various materials, and so richly detailed. Oh, a real macaw here. That is Raul Rodriguez, who is the designer of the float. He designs many of the floats here in the parade. I bet you he's got at least a dozen in this year's parade. I didn't I didn't see Raul to ask him, but he, he, he has 11, I believe. 11. I, did, I did meet him. Now, I tell you what, there is some detail on this float that just knocked me out. It was on the body scales of the dragon. Look at how massive those things are. But they use, we're not going to see it perhaps, but i got to tell you anyway, because they use ornamental kale, yet another material that I right. have not seen up to this point. And tell us about the wizard. He had a great story about his beard. His beard, again, pampas grass. You were talking about it earlier. They may fashion his beard and the hair there on Merlin out of uh, pampas grass. Cool. One of my favorite ornamental grasses. Yeah, it's not nice. hardy in my area. Oh, I, it's, I can get it. Merlin well, the makes crowd the turn. Is standing. Can you hear that noise in the background? Well, that is the United States Navy Band and Submarine Centennial Sailors, 99 instrumentals.
We mentioned a little earlier that this is the only parade in the world that has floats, it has bands, and it has equestrian units. We thought that for your HGTV coverage, we'd bring in a, a, a real expert at uh, understanding all about the horses here in the parade. This is John Dreyer. He's a full-time driver and manager. In fact, you've uh, managed one of the horse teams that we've seen already, haven't you? That's correct. The Heinz Hitch, uh, we brought out here from Pennsylvania. A and uh, uh, you've also, have you worked, are those Clydesdales, by the way? No, these are Percheron horses. Those are horses. Percherons, that's they, right. That's the horse that the Heinz Company started in business with 130 years ago. I think we got the Clydes right down there in front of us now. We're watching. Uh, they're going to they're gonna join us in just a second. Yes. The uh, Clydesdales, of course, are uh, pretty much set the standard in the industry uh -huh. for uh, big horse hitches. They are, uh, they've got three hitches that travel all over North America, and uh, they always uh, look just absolutely fabulous when they hit the street. John, are you worried, uh, you know, with, with big horses like this, you get around a crowd, a uh, million folks, a lot of noise, a lot of bands. So what, what are you thinking about before a parade starts with these big people? Well, that's always a concern, but uh, we spend a lot of time with these horses. We uh, subject them to a lot of exposure to noise, bands, uh, balloons breaking, uh, actually even firecrackers, so that we know they're, uh, we like to consider them bomb-proof when we put them in the hitch. And, and do they get a good meal before they, they go out, or you keep them hungry? No, they get, a, they get a good meal about three hours before they go out. Uh-huh. The big thing you want to do is make sure they got a lot of water. <laughs> yeah, well, because it's about a five and a half mile uh, journey. All yeah, it's actually by the time you pull uh, the float to where you start to, uh, to where you demarshal it, you're looking at easily six miles. John, this is great. We're looking at the Valley Hunt Club. Now, this is, uh, this is a, a group that has been involved, I think, since almost the very beginning of the parade back in 1889. Yes, the, the Valley Hunt Club actually is uh, reminiscent of the, um, the group that uh, actually started the Rose Parade, if you will. Yeah. Uh, 112 years ago, 112 the years ago. Uh, antique Kimball Park drag carriage had been decorated by cl uh, club members, and that, of course, started the uh, whole thing with the floats. The 18-era era carriage is... Yeah, it was terrific. John, hey, thank you very much. We really appreciate you coming up and explaining this to us. Very good. Glad John to Dreyer, be here. this man knows horses. I'll tell you that, Rebecca and Paul. Oh, he certainly does. We're on to another uh, float for all the world to see. Paul spent the afternoon with the people here as they built this one. Yeah, that was a nice float, a little stylized planet Earth looking through a telescope. And now we're moving on, looks like, to the Wyoming High School All-State Marching Band from Warland, Wyoming. 510 members. And, and make sure they all like you. We wouldn't want 510 people charging us up here. This is the largest band in the parade, by the way. Well, the boss wanted big bands. He wanted lots of bands. He got them. We got them. Let's listen. Stanford, led by Marshall President Bonnie Easley, and it might be a good time to, to just say that there's about a thousand Pasadena policemen around the parade route today. I think there's a lot more, uh, and, uh, and certainly this group mounted, they're looking good, the Long Beach Mounted Police. Just a reminder, coming up after the parade, HGTV's special presentation, New Year, New Look. It's an afternoon full of decorating ideas for the new year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your big brother. I'll help you through. Uh, All right. There we go. Hopefully ever after. All right. Man, here this we is go. a beautiful float. This is uh, 75th anniversary in the art of storytelling with the hopefully ever after for the Sparklets people. That's a little water concern out yes. here. This is the Frog Prince. 
princess no. is she's bending down. She's going to kiss that. Yeah, frog. I want to see the frog turn to a prince. Let's see what happens. Paul was telling us early. We've got a lot of corn husk here. Uh -huh. It was ironed once again, and here they applied that. It's Create the lighter those wood color yet yeah, that you see over there. And look at the candles flickering. They're actually spinning, but each one of those flames had to be covered. I'm guessing it's probably lentil, some kind of sturdy material. Yeah, but they're really crushing. spinning around. And good glue. Yeah, great glue. Good glue. <laughs> you know, we talked about the glues. There are three different glues that are used. The white glue mm -hmm. is used for dried crushed material. Sticky glue, like the Oasis, it's honey colored, is for fresh flowers. The aerosol is for ground spices. They spray it on and they literally blow the spices onto whatever it is they're trying to cover. And, and we've seen some very fine, itty bitty little seeds. Didn't you uh, oh, point out oh, some clover powder. seeds? Uh, we've seen cranberry seeds, raspberry seeds, and they the colors are absolutely stunning and brilliant with those brilliant reds. This is another beautiful, beautiful float. This is called Preserving our environment and a very uh, important theme for 2000. It's, it's by Wrigley. So the theme here is double the pleasure, double the fun, of course. So a lot of twins. How many did you say? Like 40 sets of twins or well, something? Well, what they did is they had 40 sets of twins come down to volunteer to help decorate. Now, they had a hard time keeping them straight uh, because they, they'd give one twin some instructions and the other one would go off and do something else. They'd say, no, no, I just told you to. <laughs> oh, that'd be funny. But they've got 10 sets of twins actually on the float. Well, this is a blooming beauty, and of course it is because they used one million flowers to decorate this flow. And, you know, I want to know who's been, who, who counted who counted those. Uh, All right, Paul. in the back here, this was really fun. I really like this one. This is a foxglove you're looking at. Uh -huh. Not only is it a foxglove, but if you can see into the throat of this foxglove, you can actually see a speckled throat that they created with brown lentil. Can you see? It's it? a little dark. We're getting a little sun yeah, on there. Yeah, you Maybe really, they almost it. have to get up inside. And we have a lot of orchids flowing out that are um, probably covering up the throat. But it was really quite interesting. But, but someone would say, why bother? Why would you have to go through that kind of detail? Because you want to win, and they did win. They did win a tournament special trophy. Exceptional merit in multiple classifications. Every inch, inside and out. If, they, if you can see it. It's got to be covered. So if you've got a judge looking up into the throat of this uh, box glove, it better be covered with a plant material or you're disqualified. I mean, that's as easy as it is. This is a gorgeous float. And, and when you saw it, it didn't have all of these uh, fresh flowers no, attached to it. They, they saved those for that's the about end. two days ago you saw yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. And, and it's real important. When, when we're talking fresh flowers, they saved that for the very last application. This is the James F. Burns High School Rebel Regiment Band Bryans. This is the James F. Bryans High School Rebel Band. They're from Duncan, South Carolina. Man, they had a good trip to come to California. And they're playing in the sunshine. 267 members strong. That's the same. this year but in the last 15 years these folks have won 42 marching band championships wow well they're pretty good look how tight they uh, they're operating now. it's they're always impressive and if you're in a band at home you know i know you want to admire how well these kids are doing hey here's the humor trophy this is the most amusing float that makes sense for the humor trophy yeah. it's called Stolen Time, and this is always a great story because this is put together by Cal Poly Universities of both Pomona, which is very close to Pasadena, Pasadena and St. Louis Obispo, which is up the coast of mine about three hours. Now, the students design this float, they create this float, and a lot of the plant material that you're seeing on this float was actually grown in their own gardens. What do you mean? Which means when they started planting this, they said, okay, we need we need roses, you need to grow roses. We need lentils, we need to grow lentils. The back of the dinosaur is phenomenal. They use so many fun things, a lot of the tea leaves. Look at the guy hanging I, yeah, oh, yeah. You can yeah. see we'll the straw flowers here, Brussels sprouts once again. And there he is. Yeah. Hey, oh, now he's hanging, uh, how long does he have to hang it? Five miles. Poor guy, I hope he gets a break. <laughs> but, uh, you know, what's also fun with this is they have stairs, you can see the rock 
walls on the site, they had rock kit mixtures that students mixed together different varieties of gray, black, and brown using onion, flaxseed, carrot seeds, pepper, to give us that look of a plaque stone that would be found as a pathway. Beautifully done. And one, one campus does one part of the float, the other campus does the other part, and then they bring them together. Yeah. Uh, just a, a tad before uh, the parade here in the and last they, few days. Yeah, they used some cotton balls on this, and it, you can imagine cotton and glue don't go together. The students were having a tough oh time picking fibers <laughs> off their fingers and getting it onto the Well, clothes. they're just students, they'll learn. Yeah, they will. Hey, this is the Kellogg Arabians of Cal Poly Pomona. Beautiful Arabian horses celebrating their 75th anniversary. Breeders of multinational champion Arabian show horses. How gorgeous they are. It's a nice sound, those hooves All popping right. around. Bring the kids out. Visions of fun, Rebecca. What kid doesn't have Legos? This one was a very nice float, very, very colorful. And I want you to notice the red. This is what we, remember, Rob, we were out this, we were just so caught off guard with this. Incredible red colors here. I talked to one of the volunteers. Actually, one of the volunteers working um, works in a processing plant, and they had all these raspberry seeds left over. By the way, let's just take a look at some of these roses. Two new varieties of roses never seen before, uh, papillon and also pistachio. The papillon is the butternut color. Uh -huh. We've got some pistachio on there that is a lime green. Ne first time ever seen, and it's commercially, uh, you can buy it commercially. So the, the red, finish your story. This is the, So this red is and Kramer. So this guy's working at a process plant, so these beautiful seeds, and said, hey, can you guys use this? And they said, can we use it? How much can you get to us? So that's how they got it. We the saw bed. a whole basket. Oh, and it, it, it is so the most brilliant for us. All right, now this is Ondar and the Eagles of Tuva. I've been waiting on this one. Uh, let me explain. This, these folks are hailing from the Republic of Tuva. It's a part of the Russian Federation in southern Siberia. Ondar and the Eagles of Tuva make their first appearance in the Rose Parade. And if they're coming from southern Siberia, they're probably sweating. Yeah, well, and look what they're clad in. Wait till you see the guys on the street. They've got little skivvies on, nothing else. I believe that well, is an official not. Tuva uniform. Yes, it is. This is Splash 2000, and we've got a wonderful dolphin. This yeah. is brought, brought to us by the city of Long Beach, California. Now, this dolphin, look at it closely. You see a lot of blacks here. Of course, you think black seed. There's a lot of black seed. There's onion seed. There's thistle. But you can't use one over the other because, say you use thistle, that has a very glossy look, which uh -huh. means it's going to reflect the light. Onion seed, however, is very matte, which helps the color recede. So when they select things as simple as black seed, do they want the glassy? Do they want the matte? It's what kind of effect they're trying to achieve. So they, they're really looking even at the luminescence and the, ref, the reflection of the refractory Absolutely. Do qualities. they want it to stand out or do they want it to recede into the float? How do they think all these of considerations? all those things? And, and they do. They spend a lot of time. They start in January to plan the next year's float. Okay, here's the Salvation Army, Army Tournament of Roses band. Let's take a listen. at JPL, the Jet Propulsion Lab, helped with this float, right? Yeah, you know, this one was, it's always fun to see these floats. You see them now for the first time. We are actually seeing them without the scaffolding and seeing them animated for the first time. And, it, and it's as surprising as for us as it, as it is for you Yeah, uh, they, try to, they try to describe them to us as we walk through the float barn. So yeah. around this uh, Now this take a look at these pictures. These are actual photographs that were taken and then reproduced using seed art. Mm -hmm. They, again, have their own mixture of seeds, black and white seeds. Mainly, most of these are poppy seed, chives, and then you mix the two to get the gray colors. And you can see in the background the roses, which really help make these photos pop. And again, that's part of the selection. They pick yellow roses so that the black and white photos would pop out of the sides like they're all actual lunar pictures or space pictures given to um, the float people from JPL, of course. So they take a little imagery and yes. turn it into a float. And you can see Mars is decorated with 15,000 red, orange Mercedes and Jaguar our roses. Wow. Whew. I wouldn't mind a couple of those in my garage. <laughs> but the Jaguars or the roses? <laughs> the Mercedes. Oh. <laughs> I'll take the roses. Once again, look at the detail on the beak. And you were talking earlier uh, as we saw some of the tubas about the reflection. Yeah, and, and the eagle, again, uh, we are using the corn husks, which were ironed for the occasion. <laughs> the, these are the new buffalo soldiers. Uh, 
their beautiful mounted steeds. For more in-depth information about the parade today, log on to the HGTV website. Hey, I hear, I hear a train. Well, we're on the fast track to good fortune, are we not, Paul? Ooh, hungry anyone? I know I am. I could use some carry out right about now. <laughs> this is a wonderful, it's basically two pieces here where the locomotive is drawing the back portion of the float there, which is a big old carry out box. And it's full of the pandas, which beautifully done. And the set, those seeds there, I mean, I'm sorry, the fortune cookies themselves, caraway seeds and alfalfa seeds. Look at all that. Talk about a ton of seeds. And they probably put on with what? What kind of glue would they use on that one? That'd I'm be, guessing they'd use the adhesive white or the white that on would that? Be white okay. glue. All right. And then they just sort of throw the seeds on, paint the glue on and, and throw yeah, the seeds at it? Pretty much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we saw one young gal who had to put green bees, uh, be, beans under, or peas. green peas, peas under one of the dragons uh, or a frog. Tortoise, yeah, yeah, under his chin. And, and about 99% of them kept falling right back down she in her hair. She was pelted by peas. <laughs> she was a good sport. All right. Here's the Mount Spokane and Mead High School's combined band. They're from Spokane and Mead, Washington. That's my home state. That's oh, right. That's right. You know, we played Wisconsin back in 1960 at the Rose Bowl. What was the score on that one, Rob? I can't remember. <laughs> Good answer. Yeah. My old buddy Rebecca Cole's here. I don't want to burst her balloon today. She goes into the Rose Bowl for her second year in a row with her Wisconsin band. Let's listen to this band. These, uh, these two bands got together from the Spokane area, Eastern Washington, about 300 of them all total. And both bands have terrific parade experience and have garnered honors throughout their years. Great to have them here in Pasadena as they make the turn on our HGTV live commercial free coverage, going from Orange Grove Boulevard on the left to the right there down Colorado Boulevard. And here is the dawning of a new millennium. Oh, this one is a fun one. This is a self-built float uh, by the city of Sierra Madre. And we had a great chance to uh, re really peruse this float, didn't we? Yes, right? and, and I want you to take a close gander at that, that, that sun. This sun just days ago was hit by a forklift. It, it <laughs> hit was, by a forklift. Whoa. It was smashed. A forklift fell on it. They were the hysterical. Nose, the nose was broken. Everything was broken. This is, by the way, they use the crushed straw flower. So uh -huh. they had to work around the clock to re reconstruct that face. Now watch as it turns around. Well, the reconstructive back. surgery here yes. in L.A., that's perfect. It's going to turn, <laughs> and we're going to get a moon. And, of course, the moon, we uh, use silver leaf. Notice how I said we use silver leaf, not me. They a did. lot of volunteers did to create this beautiful illusion of the moon. This is probably... Uh, pro they probably have the least amount of money of any of the floats to decorate this float in the entire parade. It's only a few tens of thousands of dollars. You know, these can go up to half a million dollars. Uh, and all the money was raised through cake sales and, and car washes and just a, a, a serious community spirit here to help gather the funds to we, create We were uh, talking to their floral decorator. This is a big step up for Sierra Madre. They did a fine job in adding a lot of, uh, uh, of, of new feeling to their float. Yeah. Rather than just doing a, a city float, they really, really went for it this year and it paid off. This is John Suttles parading Arabians. And just a reminder, you're watching HGTV's live commercial free coverage of the 111th Tournament of Roses Parade. I'm Rob Weller. This is Rebecca Cole. Hi, everyone. This is Paul James. You know him from HGTV. 
we're, we're talking about lots of the materials that are on the floats, and, and Rebecca and Paul have been showing you throughout the parade some of the materials. What is this? Well, this is blue status. You know, I told you how hard it was to find a blue material. We've got the iris, but if you want a lot of blue material, you need something like this status. This is what they use, and I want you to think about this. This comes on a long stem. What the volunteers have to do is they take these little flower buds, they have to pluck these off and then crush them and they have to do it by hand there's no other way and like i said one whole stem you're not even going to get about an eighth of a cup so a lot of status is being plucked to get the blue images we're seeing here on the float wow. and, and our seed man here. well we've seen a lot of seeds as well here's a mixed bag of some legumes some wonderful we've got some lima beans we got some uh black beans you love those black beans southwestern oh, stop yeah. and look lots of lentils here's a pink lentil that's being used in a lot of the floats to get this great color but again you can begin to imagine how difficult it is to put yeah. each and every one of those on. Uh, All right, let's spin around back down to Orange Grove Boulevard as we see yet another beautiful float, probably having some of the materials that Rebecca and Paul just showed you. This is yeah. called Dream Vacation. This Rebecca. is the first float I saw, and it was just enchanting. You can see three schools of fish, 80 fish in each school, literally swimming above the top. Below, of course, is a, uh, a scene that you would see if you were diving in the ocean. Now, the one thing that really struck me on this one, you know, I told you that they're always searching for new plant material. Take a look at this octopus, and you probably see a lot of orange, but what may, you may not see close up is that that orange color you're seeing is actually dried apricots. Yeah, there you can see that. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Nice and and beans. Look at the lima beans. Yummy. The, the volunteers were actually in the market, the produce section. He saw these apricots. He goes, there you go. I have my orange. The problem is these do not glue on easily, and they didn't know oh, that. Man after it was done. So they had to sit there, not only glue it on, but hold it on. I was told they used 300 pounds of dried apricots for the octopus. You know, all their efforts paid off. This is a winner, Grand Marshal's Trophy for the most creative design. Yeah. Pasadena City College Tournament of Roses Honor Band, 203 members. City Band here. This is the Pasadena City College Tournament of Roses Honor Band. Now let's try to take a good look at this next float. Making wishes come true. Children are our future, Paul. You don't want to miss this one. Check out the genie. And his costume is so richly decorated. He's got carnations, chrysanthemums, dendrobium orchids, linaria, blue sinuata status, and lots and lots of red carnations. Check those out. I really loved this float. The sides of this float, when we may see them soon, is trimmed in some pinto beans and cranberries, which I thought was kind of fun. But there's a lot going on here. Now this one includes a treasure chest. You can see right there on the side of the float, full of roses. And at the base of each stem, the name of LA County Sheriff's Department officers lost in the line of duty. Right there. Real camels, they've got one, two, three, four, five, six real camels. one we saw earlier was also spectacular. Okay, take a look at this next one. This is, oh, yes, no, a roller on. coaster no, on no way. a float. Yeah, no watch way. this. In fact, the guy's going up now. He's coming around. Watch this. You can hear the crowd. There he goes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh, my. Ah! Oh, look at that. It's a real coaster. At it 22 is a coaster. miles per hour, no less. And you've got to keep in mind, now, the rods you see that are carrying the coaster uh -huh. uh, um, have to be coated. 
they have to coat this. And of course, they use Japanese seaweed to, to cover that up. This one um, has, again, a lot of different crushed material, uh, a lot of the straw flowers used. 15,000 fluorescent roses, 7,000 blue iris, 3,000 white dendrobium and phalaenopsis orchids. And, and one rider who's having the time of his life all the way down the parade route. Here yeah, we go. One kid Look. would not want hands to up, hands up, hands yeah. up, all you chicken. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, get those hands up. Oh. How fun. Very, very fun. I wouldn't doubt that he has to propel himself around that. Well, he's using a little body English on some of those. Yes, Dips there. Yeah, I, I would think he's uh, not going to need to work out at the gym later today. There are some real waterfalls that uh, cascade around the floats. Here's people. Th 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 here are your relatives. They're waving to you. Yes, hello. They're all saying hi. And there's part of the parade route. You can see one million plus spectators. Here. Glitches, no breakdowns. It's been a great day. And HDTV's commercial free coverage of the 111th Tournament of Roses Parade is sponsored by Kodak, Advantix Cameras and Film. This is the Fairfield High School Scarlet Brigade Band. They're from Fairfield, California. They've been here for the past 15 years. They've performed around Canada and Hawaii. Yeah, they're doing a bunny good job. Three hundred forty-five members. Don't they look great? HGTV special presentation. Here comes All Liberty, right. Lady Liberty herself. Well, it's called Liberty for All. And there are 80 flags that surround Lady Liberty. This is the second tallest float in the parade. And I think you'll hear God Bless America, which, of course, was written by Irving Berlin, Paul. By the way, study those flags. There's going to be a quiz later. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was written, coined by Irving Berlin, and prompted a uh, fellow Okie, Woody Guthrie, to write the famous This Land is Your Land. And you are Did from you know Oklahoma. That I didn't know that. Yeah, I am. Well, we have all had to get in our little hometown plugs. <laughs> this is a beautiful float, though, you can see. 50 feet tall, and there again, as Rebecca was talking about earlier, recreating blue. It's beautifully done here with the status. And this is yet another one that had to be put down so it could clear the bridge at a whopping 50 feet tall. It is wonderful to see Lady Liberty. Even uh, in the next millennium, she's going to be an important part of our country. She's pretty much made up of eucalyptus leaves, silver leaf, and lunaria. <laughs> Here are the classic Curly Riders. This here marks the American Bashkir Curly's 15th appearance in the Rose Parade. The American Bashkir Curly horse is known for its wavy coat. You can see that, look at that. They, they apparently have a very calm and, and very gentle disposition, a real sweet horse. Looked kind of like palm fiber, didn't it? It did. In fact, you know, after you guys explain all these materials, I'm not sure those are real horses. <laughs> they may not be next year. It could be. All right, here's a good one. This is the R.I.P. Y2K bug, and you betcha, baby. Rest in peace, Y2K bug. lost. Boy, yeah, this one is, uh, see, look at the outside of the box of the computer. Uh -huh. This, you know, as Paul was talking about, they had to press corn husks. They did that for three days. They pressed these corn husks, and then they, a volunteer came in who happened to be a bricklayer. And if you were to see that close up, it looks as close as bricks on the side of a building. Wow. The way he, there look it at is. that. There it is. And, and they were they were all just taken back at how quickly this bricklayer could apply this because the volunteers who are not used to this were not doing it as well nor as fast. And he was thrilled. He didn't have to use any mortars. That's probably, right. It was very probably the happiest he's been on a job in a long time. This is the city of Alhambra, California. Once again, just down the freeway, you might hear from Pasadena. The, the surrounding communities have had a long tradition of joining in with Pasadena to, uh, to show off their cities and their charitable groups that they work with and the volunteers that they deal with. It's all part and parcel of the one-year preparation that uh, all of these communities and floats uh, go through to get ready for this very day. And this is ringing in the new year with Kiwanis. 
Yes, it is. It did win the Volunteers Trophy Award for the best floral design of the parade. Same under 35 feet in length. And of course, this is a bear that is so uh, perfect for the Kiwanians who constantly are giving children bears. Now, look at the bear's jacket, paisley. This is so sweet. Button moms, we have straw flowers, we have carnations that create that paisley look. The belly of this bear, uh -huh. if you could see just there inside it there, there the that is made right out there. of the chokes from artichoke hearts. Whereas if you leave an artichoke in the field, it blooms into the most gorgeous flower. That is the choke. The bow, by the way, was done and selected in honor of the first lieutenant governor, who is for the first time a woman. She loves purple. She got purple in the form of a bow on this this cute, cute float. Well, you know, when you're running the organization, you can drop a few hints here. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> By the way, 7,000 moms are scattered along this float. Uh, it, it, he's the cutest teddy bear. He wanted to just get out there and just give him a nice little hug when yeah, we saw him the other day. Yeah, like a cute little... Yeah, he was very, very cute. Look at that, gang. All enjoying the parade here today. Getting to the end. Although I, I might say you're probably staying a little warmer there at home watching the HGTV live commercial free coverage of this 111th Rose Parade, Tournament yeah. of Roses Parade. Camera's right below us. Yeah. Did you see us? That was Rebecca waving up there. I don't know if you saw her. This is the Mayfield High School Marching Band. They're from Las Cruces, New Mexico. 250 total members. And one of the leading marching bands in the state of New Mexico. We're thrilled to have them here in front of our cameras for you today. Let's listen. Mexico. 250 total members. This is the Portland Rose Festival. You know, they got a terrific festival up there every year. And this is their entry into the uh, 111th Tournament Roses Parade. Amber Starks is the 1999 Portland Rose Festival Queen, and she rides on this float today. Rebecca? This one was a, a nice one to look at. It was very, very specific with its lines. I mean, the one thing that I noticed was the clarity on all the animals here. The um, chipmunk, or you know, any of the animals, but one thing, if you have red dock, do you ever have, have a problem with red dock in, in your area? No. Red dot. Well, anybody who has a problem with red dot, which is women, what it's is it? It's a week. Uh -huh. Well, they have put it to good use. They have covered the chipmunk with red dot. So uh, that's what you need to do with the weeds that you have out there. The skunk, finely ground coconut, and of course onion seed. There he we, comes. There he is. Yeah. The fox had the pine needles and the pampas grass. You could see the crushed sweet or straw flower for the little duckling. All marching in a row to celebrate the millennium. We get a little of what's called curly dock. Curly dock. It's a relative of the red dock. <laughs> but that's a very vibrant red color. Yeah, it's very pretty. It's actually a, a, like a crimson color up close uh, with a you know, brownish tinge to it. And, and reds can be sometimes difficult to find. You were talking about it earlier. Yeah, reds can be to get the, I mean, well, you know, we. The, the difference is you got the carnations, but if you want a very smooth surface, not with texture, then you have to think of ground materials and seed, and that's where the, the cranberry and strawberry work excellent. This is the Al Mal Malachi Silver Mounted Police. This is the Mounted Patrol of Los Angeles and Tehran Mounted Patrol of Fresno. They combined got together, came up with this good-looking group. They do a lot of work for the Shrine Hospitals, by the way. 
Hocus Focus, Paul. That's right, Hocus Focus, presented by the South Pasadena Tournament of Roses Association. This is powered, incidentally, by environmentally friendly compressed natural gas. I'm happy for it. This is a self-built float, one of the oldest in the parade, been around since 1911. And we talked uh, a moment ago about the self-built floats. This one, you know, they get a little seed money from the tournament, and then they go out and raise funds. They sell pens, they sell candy bars, they do whatever they can. I was amazed at the number of volunteers from all over the country. I chatted with a woman from Pennsylvania who comes here every year just to work on this float. And the astronomer there is the designer. Well, that's great. He's, he saved a spot for himself there. Absolutely, a key spot. That's what I'd do. I tell you, if you do something that looks that good. This is uh, brought to you by the Lutheran Celebration of Religion. This is called Praise God Forever. It is, and it's a beautiful float. There are 18 stained glass panels here that are so beautifully detailed. The panels, uh, one for each time that uh, these folks have been in the Tournament of Roses Parade. To get the lead look, they used onion seed, and then the panels themselves are decorated with a variety of different materials. Look at that. I mean, you, you know, from a distance, it looks like a real stained glass panel. Now look at the roof here. These are cedar shingles. But Rob, as you know, since you live in this neck of the woods, these are illegal here, That's right? That's right, because of the fire danger in California. They had to get special permission to actually use these on the float and use a treated form. Uh, I love it. Untreated form. These are right untreated? That's right. Mark Carmel, marching Sun Devils. They're from San Diego, California. Man, they look like there's a whole squad of them, and I'm right, 380 marching Sun, Devil, Sun Devils. Here they come crossing the, it's the very beginning of the parade, once again here on Orange Grove Boulevard. We've got about a five and a half mile walk from this point. I believe they're undaunted. They're ready to perform. still have one uh, one more float to go but wouldn't you know it there's a little bit of a delay good well we can sit and talk about gives us a chance to yeah. talk a little bit about what we've seen and and uh, and the materials that we've used this year and what's gone on with this parade it's been a terrific parade as a matter of fact uh, really without a hitch uh, gaps here are are usually common the last couple of years we haven't had any yeah the the theme this year is visions of the future so a lot of the floats we are looking at and have seen uh, might depict what kind of images we might see by the way in january they secretly talk about the theme and i've been told next year's theme is fabric of america but don't tell anybody fabric of fabric america, of america. Of america. Right. so which means right when we're done here no doubt a lot of these designers are going to get together in a building and start coming up with what can we do so that we can be in the parade next year one of the things they do all the all the floats go down to a, a, a holding area and for the next three four days folks from around this area will take their families and you get to go right up to the floats and do everything except touch them and eat them <laughs> and if but you have, a, you have a good chance to get up to the uh, the floats and see what they look like. It's really fun. Let's go back down to Orange Grove Boulevard. And this Readers is called winners. Readers Are Winners. That's right. And this one did win an award. The Isabella Coleman Trophy for the biggest head. <laughs> <laughs> Does that guy know he's losing hair? Yeah. For the best presentation of color and color harmony. And this is what we, uh, uh, Rob and I were talking about early when we went through the barn. See the nose on that tortoise? Mm -hmm. That is covered with split peas. Some poor teenage girl was there for five hours oh. just to cover that nose. And the problem, white glue, she would put a handful of the peas, half of them would fall off down her sleeve in the hood of her her sweater and who knows where she was had to wear goggles but it took her five hours just to do that nose in fact I was told they went through 800 pounds of peas 
just to cover the tortoise here. I, ironically, this happens to be the last float, and it says finish line, but they didn't do that on purpose. No, this was not planned. It's it's part of, of Aesop's fables right. with the tortoise and the hare, and of course, there's the hare lounging, not worried about uh, making the race because he thinks he's going to win, and uh, the tortoise working hard and ends up being... That, I'm going to be just like that hare today, laying back, watching that Rose Bowl game, yes. Stanford versus Wisconsin. Yes, it's going to be a great game. That's coming up a little bit later, of course, today. And this is the spirit of the West Riders making their ninth appearance in the Rose Parade. Each rider got the spirit of the American frontier. They got those old-timer outfits. They got the chaps on and the leather fringe. They got more teeth than the old, real old-timers <laughs> used really, to have, I think do. so. These are all dedicated historians and avid equestrians. Yeah. I still wear one of those fringe jackets. You do? You know what the fringe is for, Rob? No, I give up. To shed water. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Is that it actually has a purpose, yeah. yeah it's shed go. water. Well, here we come to the end of the parade. It's hard to believe the 111th is over. I hope you enjoy. Here, put these on. Okay, I'll See do See what it. you look like. <laughs> Why, I get to put them on and look like a fool. There you go. 2,000. Look yes. at Rebecca Coles with her little 2,000 goggles on. We, we had appreciate a great time. everybody joining us yeah. today. We Absolutely. We're to bring you the parade. We want to, want to thank you for letting HGTV help kick off your new year with the 111th Tournament of Roses Parade. Our encore presentation of the parade begins tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern and Pacific. Coming up next, the celebration continues with HGTV's special presentation, New Year, New Look. That's an afternoon of great decorating ideas for the new year, beginning with Joan Stephan and decorating sets. For Rebecca Coles and Paul James, we had a great time. I'm Rob Weller. Happy New Year to Happy all Happy New Year. Bye, everybody. You look good. You look good with those glasses.